Day four at Edge Bass, and we are set for a thrilling conclusion to this opening Ashes Test match. Stuart Broad striking twice late early on to send the Edge Bass and crowd into a frenzy. But let's start by going back to the beginning of the day when England set up uh, this match with their second innings. And Matt, well, it all started with a reverse scoop from Joe Root. It did. Uh, not one that came off, but then two that did in the following over for six and four off Scott Boland. And I suppose that in a similar way uh, to Zach Crawley setting the tone for a pretty uh, proactive and dominant performance on the first day, probably set the tone for a more uh, frenetic type of batting mm. performance from England today. They didn't really... Uh, ever looked quite uh, as comfortable as they probably did in the first innings. Um, probably best illustrated by the fact that the biggest partnership of that innings was uh, only worth 52 between Joe Root and Harry Brook, and yet everyone apart from Zach Crawley made it into double figures. Um, so it was a, a strange sort of innings from England, and one that they might look back as an opportunity missed to have put the game out of Australia's sight, but to be honest, I don't think that's how this England team think. Um, I think they'll be looking at it as a, a pretty decent uh, second dig and something that set the game up for what we hope is a really gripping uh, final day tomorrow because this is sort of brewing as another Ashes classic. Um, I thought Pat Cummins and Nathan Lyon who, who bowled the bulk of the overs actually for Australia um, but were both fantastic. Uh, Josh Hazelwood also good but in a sort of more supporting role for the main two guys. Um, but yeah I think we, we've hopefully set up a really intriguing final day and it also set up a really intriguing sort of last uh, session of the day where Australia were cruising along and then suddenly uh, Robinson sort of burst the game open by removing Warner. Absolutely, um, he and Usman Quadra looked very settled uh, for the first hour or so uh, of that chase. It actually took me back to an Ashes series uh, back in 2013 actually where there's a couple of games that played out like this, the famous Trim Bridge one of now win and then, and then at Chesler Street again where I think Australia were chasing something similar. In that second chase it was Stuart Board that blew the game open on, on that day and kind of you had a, a sense that it could well be Stuart Board again here uh, today and, and it was uh, Marnus Labuschagne for the second time in the game and then Stephen Smith and it has to be said he worked them both over he did Marnus with the new outswinger shall we say in the first innings this was more of a traditional just good length ball really that uh, Marnus pushed out again he'll be disappointed with the test match he's had he prides himself in how well he prepares for games and, and just how good a player he is but is there is a bit of a discrepancy forming now between his home and away records he's started to play enough away cricket now that you can just start to judge the differential a little bit that's not to say he won't put it right during this series but he's not had a great start with the bat in this match and then Steve Smith um, obviously four years ago what he did on this ground always makes him the, the, the big wicket and um, Stuart Board thought he may have had him a couple of balls before when a beautiful outswinger just went, uh, just actually took the edge, but fell short of Johnny Bairstow, and then he did it again. And um, this time, the catch taken by Johnny Bairstow, and the crowd just went wild. You, you thought that Shubord might get onto one of those late spells where he takes three or four wickets, but Scott Boland, fair play to him, did a very good job as Australia's night watchman and saw it through with Usman Kawaja, who of course played that brilliant first innings. It feels like he'll be key tomorrow. We know that as and when Travis Head comes out, he'll play his shots. England will feel that that keeps them in the game with getting him out, but. Usman Kawadras looks so controlled and so smooth in this game that you do feel he could have a decisive impact on this game as well. The other thing we'll be looking towards in the morning is the skies. The forecast is not great for the first hour or so here in Birmingham. It's promised to move through later, so it does look as though we'll get some play quite when it starts is the key. And also what the overheads do. Uh, we saw that spell um, yesterday night where the ball zipped around uh, when it was murky more than it has done at all in the game. In England will be hoping that the cloud stays but the rain clears and we can get a thrilling finish to this opening test match. And I suppose the other thing to bear in mind as well will be the status of Moen Ali's spinning finger. Um, we've just heard from Nathan Lyon saying he, he's like a, a singer without a voice being asked to perform a concert. And that is sort of how it feels. I mean, uh, I think Graham Swan forecast this a couple of weeks ago saying it will be tough for him and the hardest challenge for Moen will be gripping the Red Dukes ball and how different it is from the White Cook Bar. It has a prouder seam. Uh, all the stuff that we sort of knew was brewing in the build-up to this test, but it really feels as though in the past uh, couple of days we've seen such a big change in terms of, uh, you know, Moen's, Moen's uh, his body language, his ability to spin the ball, his actual bowling action. I think he's been coming a little bit lower, not turning the ball as much. So I think how England managed their bowlers and how Ben Stokes managed to juggle his bowlers throughout the last day is going to be an absolutely vital part of this test match because... You know, it doesn't feel as though we're going to go, go towards the sort of second new ball phase of this game, given you know, Australia is still scoring it comfortably three and over. Um, and therefore, I think that the status of Moen's spinning finger is going to be a, a massive thing on day five of what promises to be a, a thriller. And just finally, let's not rule out Ben Stokes from this bowling performance. <laughs> if there's ever a man to come in in a tight 
test match scenario to win, it is Ben Stokes. So if it gets down to the final throws tomorrow, do not be at all surprised to see Ben Stokes in the thick of the action. And, it, and either way, it should be a thrilling finish to this test match. Thanks so much for watching ESPN on YouTube. And for more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for premium content and live streaming, subscribe to ESPN+.